Hello everyone and welcome back to the Wild Side with Wildlife SOS and I'm Karthik Satyanarayan, co-founder and CEO of Wildlife SOS. Today we have with us a celebrated filmmaker, author, photographer and a National Geographic explorer known for his award-winning wildlife documentary films and coffee table books exposing the need to conserve threatened species and habitats around the world. His subjects range from king cobras to clouded leopards. His films are broadcast worldwide on National Geographic, BBC, Discovery, to name a few. This person has also been someone I've known for over 20 years. So not only is he a dear friend, he's someone I've known as a teenager, and I've had countless adventures with him in the jungle. We were both passionate and crazy about wildlife as youngsters. I went on to work with wild animals and protect them and conserve them and start Wildlife SOS. He went on to train himself as a wildlife filmmaker and I'm really very proud of him. Here's presenting Sandesh Kadu. Welcome to the show, Sandesh. How are you? Hey, Karthik. I'm so honored to be on the wild side. It's fantastic to see you. Thank you. How have you been doing during this lockdown? I'm sure you're missing the outdoors like mad. It's actually been hard to see everything that's going on across the world. I mean, just the way that the entire world is just crumbled, it's just shut down. But I feel like it's probably one of like nature's biggest warnings that we really need to pay attention to. I think this pandemic is a real lesson. And if people don't learn from this, I don't know what's going to teach us. We know that we live in an incredibly biodiverse country. We know that there are a lot of cool species, many of which are still not discovered. So one thing that even in my books, what I try to show, I highlight the discovery of new species because that's something that excites people, right? You know, when you know that there's still so many things left to be discovered. And that's what drives me as well as a, storyteller is finding something new, something that you've never seen before. And once you do that, once you have people like enraptured by something new, something exciting, something that they'd never seen before, something that boggles their mind, where do you go from there? You want to channel their interest into something that's important, into something that's long-term, something that's tangible. And the one thing that I know that we absolutely need to do, for not just for our generation, but for the future generations, is to conserve our wild places. As a matter of fact, my own company here in Bangalore, Fellas Creations, our motto is very simple. We create content, right, to help conserve nature. So create, connect, conserve. Create content, make people connect with nature and help conserve it ultimately. So that's what, that's what really drives me and motivates me to keep doing what I'm doing. That's amazing. Sandesh, you've produced this brilliant book on the Eastern Himalayas and you worked on it for five years. What are your thoughts for this landscape? You mean this one? Absolutely. It's been a, it's been a labor of love. It's something that I worked on with my co-author, Dr. Kamal Bawa, who's a professor of botany, the founder of ATRI, Ashoka Trust for Research in Ecology and the Environment. So together, we spent a good part of five years in the Eastern Himalaya. And when I say the Eastern Himalaya, I'm talking about uh, from central Nepal, east all the way to the end of Arunachal Pradesh. Many species endemic to that landscape. It's the center of origin of species like rhododendrons, you know, these amazing flowering plants in the Himalaya. After that book, we realized how important it is to create these books. And the Western Ghats book was used as a part of the conservation dossier that was sent to uh, UNESCO that helped get the Western Ghats declared as a UNESCO uh, World Heritage Site. And that's when I realized the power of books 
and video. And if you can combine the two, you harness the power of visual imagery, you can really make a long-term impact. I had never been to the Himalaya before. I'm a sucker for a free trip. So when Dr. Baba said, uh, hey, do you want to come to the Himalaya? I just thought he just wanted me to uh, visit the Himalaya. And I said, of course. And immediately he realized how enraptured I was by this magnificent snow-capped mountain range. And he said, so would you like to work on a book with me about this area? And I couldn't say no. But what I want to draw attention to is, okay, we've done this, but the point is that these biodiversity hotspots on the planet, Conservation International came together with, with top scientists around the world and identified at that time about 34 biodiversity hotspots across the planet. India has four of those hotspots, the Western Ghats and the Himalaya, the Sunda land, uh, the Andaman Nicobar landscape. So these hotspots are areas with an incredible variety of life, staggering biodiversity, and also has the potential to like su to support huge human populations. And these are also the areas that are threatened, highly threatened by human development. To me, what I realized working there for five years is the unprecedented pace of development that's happening without any kind of planning, without any kind of forethought that our forefathers always had in terms of balancing our needs with the needs of the wilderness. That's why th these books are important because these books go to people who are decision makers and it, uh, we hope that it will help mold policy. We hope it will help educate people enough, I mean decision makers, to influence them, to make them realize what is going to be lost if we don't plan properly. Absolutely. Sandesh, you also filmed uh, BBC's Planet Earth and now uh, Wildcats of India with Nat Geo Wild. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience while filming these documentaries and where can people watch these films? Sure, yeah, no, the, B the BBC work, uh, Planet Earth 2, we filmed a lot in uh, Kaziranga and we also filmed in uh, Jodhpur. Well, I, in, in my particular role for that was filming the Langur monkeys in Jodhpur and uh, the amazing moist grassland habitat of Kaziranga, one of my all time special places in the world, one of India's most amazing wilderness areas. Uh, but soon after that, I started to work on this project for National Geographic. Uh, it's called Wildcats of India. You can watch it right now on Disney and Hotstar. It's a fun watch. Um, it was a labor of love and a passion project for us. Our company, like I mentioned, is Felis. Felis as in felines. And all of us here, we love our cats, our wild cats in particular. And this gave me a great excuse to travel across the country and, and look for these cats, many of which I had never seen before. I should take a minute to just quickly chat about the fun time we had. I enjoyed every minute of it. Do you have some fun memories from that time back then? Oh yeah, I mean, um, you were great company in the field. All I remember is um, you know, sneaking off in the middle of the night, going to these crazy places in the middle of Banagata National Park outside of Bangalore. And after reading books by Jim Corbett and Kenneth Anderson and all these um, you know, amazing writers, you as a teenager, you're just filled up with excitement and you want a little bit of that adventure. In the middle of the night, we kept hearing this <laughs> what is that? What is that? Neither one of us knew what it was. I mean, come on, we were like 14, 15 years old. And then it's very painful sitting on a tree for three or four hours. I think we realized it that night. And I came down the tree and I had to um, quickly answer nature's call. And then <laughs> that call is much closer. And immediately my mind lights up. 
the sawing call of a leopard as described by every author out there. We were looking down and there was a, a full moon night and the leopard walked across right under our tree and it scratched on our tree, then scent marked on the next tree and then went off. That was magical. You know, I think we've been very lucky, Sandesh. We've had some of the best sightings you know, you can ever get on this planet. And that's what I really love about, you know, working with you and, and having had this long-term experience, you know, being with you on many of these things with sloth bears, leopards, and God knows what. It's just been amazing just uh, seeing how you've done with Wildlife SOS. And, and I've really enjoyed watching um, uh, Wildlife SOS on television, all the things that you guys have done on National Geographic. If no one's watched it, I really um, impress upon you to watch this amazing program. It's uh, Karthik and his entire team, you know, being on the front lines of conservation. If you want to see what it's like to be a wildlife vet in India, to go out there and actually get your hands on proper conservation in the, on the front lines, watch India's Jungle Heroes to really get an idea and your team did such an amazing job um, going around and really bringing to life what you guys do, you know, encapsulating it all into that, into that show. And Sandesh, I remember you were present with us when we rescued the last dancing bear in India on 18th of December, 2009. And that was such a proud moment for all of us. And you have yourself been such a strong supporter of Wildlife SOS and you've seen seen it grow to what it is today. How did you feel when we got every single bear off the streets of India? That was actually a, a very surreal and epic feeling uh, when I was there with you at Banergata, with you and, and Geeta and your team. And the last of the dancing bears was walking up the road, being brought to the center and just being there and realizing, wow, here I am at the end of an era, an era of uh, injustice to sloth bears. This is the end of that era. And it was so symbolic where that sloth bear was being handed over. So it's been wonderful to have been a small part of this amazing journey that you and Wildlife SOS have had. And, and I only wish I could help more and contribute more so it's amazing to see that it actually all happened and it's all been documented for everyone to see. And I hope that uh, more and more of these epic things comes out of Wildlife SOS. And I look forward to being part of many more. Thank you, Sandesh. You know, you've been filming wildlife for decades. I wanted to ask you what your thoughts are about ethics in wildlife photography. You know. Some professionals justify sitting on an elephant's back for the purpose of capturing a shot of our filming. What is your opinion about this? That's actually a very important point and I'm glad you brought it up as a point of discussion. I am definitely part of the refuse to ride campaign. I can't even remember when the last time I went up or anywhere close to an elephant that was in those conditions. And it's so deplorable to see that we as photographers do definitely do not need to get on top of an elephant to get any kind of a shot. It's not worth it. It's not worth it for the elephant. It's not worth it for, uh, uh, for the shot because, well, look at what you're doing to this animal. All of us in our own consciousness, we need to realize the damage that we've inflicted. And here are elephants, amazingly intelligent creatures with emotion, with feeling. And in order to do what they do, they need to be broken. And that whole process, if anyone sees it, and if they see that this is being done for us to gain the upper hand, and if they have any ounce of sentiment, they will never participate or ride an elephant ever in their life. Thank you for mentioning that, Sandesh. Yeah, the Refuse to Ride campaign uh, is a resource website. Uh, it's refuse to ride.org, and people can 
educate themselves about what the truth is uh, behind riding elephants and training elephants. And I think once people are aware about it, I think they'll be tempted to do the right thing. Thank you so much for that. We'll now move on to our next segment called Elephant in the Room, ironically. Uh, where I'm going to ask you a series of random questions and you have to answer as quickly as possible. Are you ready? Ready. What is your spirit animal? The Pogeyan. Google that. Which is your favorite big cat? The largest of the small cats. The smallest of the big cats. The clouded leopard. This is like you're quizzing us. We are the one <laughs> quizzing you. Hello. <laughs> I want to keep it different. I want to keep it dynamic. It can't be the same every time. Your favorite shoot in the last five years? The Sarada shoot in Satara for seven worlds, one planet for the BBC. This tiny lizard going and fighting in midair. Stunning, stunning. Well, what and who inspires you? The Dalai Lama on one side here. And then yeah. there's David Attenborough up there. If you could wish for any superpower and have it, what would that be? I wish I had that power to just go out there and just wave a magic wand and protect our biodiversity. Last one. What advice would you give to people who would like to follow in your footsteps? First advice is don't follow anyone's footsteps. Everyone's feet are different. Everyone takes a different path to get to wherever they are going. If you take my footsteps, you will take a very long and winding path <laughs> to be doing what you could have been doing with very few footsteps. So, uh, but if you want to be doing, you know, what it is, whatever it is that I'm doing as a wildlife filmmaker uh, or photographer, I tell people to practice the three Ps. So they need to have patience, passion, and perseverance to get into photography. That was terrific, Sandesh. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Do you have a message for our viewers? Well, thank you, Karthik and Wildlife SOS for everything that you do for the last couple of decades, everything you've done for the planet, for the environment, for the animals. Continue doing what you're doing. Your audiences love you for the work that you do, for the animals you protect every single day. I wish I could come over and be a volunteer all over again and start, you know, do something with you. And I'm sure we will, but for the audiences, stay engaged, uh, stay connected and contribute to the amazing work that Wildlife SOS has been doing and hope you come to visit some of their facilities soon. Thanks for having me, Karthik. It's amazing to be on the wild side Hope to see you soon. Take care. Stay home and stay safe. Bye. Bye. Well, that's our show for today. But before we go, I'd like to tell you all that while the COVID pandemic has driven people off the streets, calls involving wildlife in cities have increased. The Wildlife SOS teams and the Rapid Response Units continue to operate the hotlines in the midst of a nationwide lockdown. If you'd like to help animals in distress and support our rescue and animal care staff, all you have to do is donate whatever you can. You can go to www.wildlifesos.org slash donate and give anything that you can afford. Every little bit helps and your donation can make a huge difference. You can also help us protect elephants by signing the petition which is on www.refusetoride.org.